the Admiral Broadway Review, brought to you by your Admiral dealer. The man to see for Admiral dual temp refrigerators, Admiral electric ranges, Admiral radios, phonographs, and magic mirror television. It's the Admiral Broadway Review, April Sun. Admiral Broadway Review, with a happy blend of song, dance, and comedy, brings you April's Sun. Look, my best suit is pressed, bought a tie to match my vest and glove, top hat high enough to nest a dove. Love this Sunday, told my girl, got a whirl. Get the finest stuff in town to wear. Betcha everyone will stop and stare. There's my Sunday. Today, there's a lot of fun. There's a lot of fun in walking, walking my baby on Fifth Avenue. Today, there's a blue, blue sky. And I don't know why I feel as telling that star at his debut. Forget your troubles, yesterday is gone and dead, tomorrow's far away. Have no time to bother, I'm concerned about today. Gotta leave my winter worries home and dress up fine. Got the weather in my blood, the world's all mine. Today is the call for green, and you should have seen the funny, funny he seems to know the time of year. And we're here to stay, you ought to know this wonderful kind of glow is here to stay.
have seen the funny, funny he seems to know the time of year. That you ought to know this wonderful kind of love is here to stay. To And gave it Harlem rhythm with the boogie note. It pops on the radio hotter than Hades, so get on the beam, turn on the steam. Dig that beat, shake your feet, feel the heat. Swing your partner with a pirouette, doing the boogie boogie menuet. Slap your thighs, roll your eyes. Win that prize, it's the rhythm that you won't forget, doing the bogey bogey minuet. When the music gets real low down, don't slow down or you'll miss the boat. Get to the beat and you'll float, all the judges will give you their vote. Reef that pleat, shred that wheat, struck that street, knock your knees and be a castanet, doing the bogey bogey minuet. Madame will cost you exactly $199.99. Oh, it's worth every penny of it. Ah, merci, madame. In this Easter bonnet, madame will be so chic that all the other ladies will turn green, oh. n'est-ce pas? Bonjour, madame. Oh, bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour, bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> bonjour. Oh, money, 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 money. How do you do? Are you Mr. Lafayette? Oui, monsieur. Well, Hooligan's my name. Just wanted to drop in and introduce myself. I'm the new cop on the beach. Oh, I'm shot, hey, monsieur. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I just wanted to let you know that as long as I'm on this beach, you don't have to worry about anything. I'll keep an eye on things. Sir. Oh, you're too kind, monsieur. That's all right, sir. Hey, drop you in anytime. Later. You are always welcome. Thank monsieur. you very much. Hey. Oh, dear, I feel this is my lucky day. I feel it a lot of money. Oh, bonjour, monsieur, bonjour. Something I can show you. Perhaps an Easter bonnet for your wife? Eh, uh, oui. Uh, your lady friend, oui. Uh, here is something. Uh, this will cost you $399.99. This is stick up. Oh, no, monsieur. It's very, very No, no. This is stick up. Oh, no, monsieur. But it's the finest quality there. Party, this is stick up. No, monsieur. Give me the money. Money? The dough, the dough. Oh, Give me the money. The dough, the money. That's right. Oh, monsieur. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, monsieur. All right, inside, buddy. Monsieur? Inside and here. Inside? That's right. Oh, monsieur. Happy Easter. We. Oui. Oh. oh. Yeah. That's dope. <laughs> <Exactly. Okay. laughs> Where's the club yet? Yeah. Uh, who oh, I see. You're his yeah. assistant. Yeah, we. Oui. Are you new around here? We, oui, we. Oui. Oh, just come over from France, huh? We, we, we. Well, I'm new around here, too. Hooligan's my name. Oui, I'm oui. a cop in this area. We. Oui. I'll keep an eye on things for you. You needn't worry about anything. We, oui, we. Oui. <laughs> 
See you later. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Well, say, that's a mighty nice looking hat you got. Nice. Wee wee. Wee wee. Oh, wow. Pretty close. Oh, Mr. I Girl, did. that's the end of the game, Mr. Mint. When I got back to town, I said to myself, Girl, you get right over to Monsieur Lafayette and buy yourself a new <coughs> Where's Monsieur Lafayette? Uh, he's all knocked out. He went home for the day. Uh, Not here? Oh, what a disappointment. But I wouldn't dream of leaving without buying Look, a hat. Look, lady, why don't you come back tomorrow and appoint I'm here? just in the mood for buying a hat. And when I'm in the mood, nothing can stop me. Now look, lady, I don't want to get rough with you. I'm just telling I'm you. I'm right. determined to buy a hat. Look, lady, why don't you come back tomorrow? Stop prowling and prowling. Lady, prowling. I'm warning you for life. <laughs> oh, see, you've got a customer already. Uh, wee, wee, wee. <laughs> well, good luck to you. Wee wee. <coughs> wee wee wee. Uh, wee. Hey, I hope you do a good business. Wee wee, wee 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 wee. Come on, lady, now you're gonna get out of here. Uh, I know the better the business is, the better I like it. Wee 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 wee. wee. Come on, lady, now you gotta get out of here Come because on. this is like. Hey, you want a hat? Here, twelve hundred dollars. I'll take it. I don't like it. Hey, she. Here, another hat, fourteen hundred dollars. I don't like that one either. Well, that's all the hats we got. Stop! Look, lady, I'm telling you for the Oh, that's just what I want. What a dream. No, you it? can't have that hat. Why not? You can't have it because it's a terrible hat. What? You don't like it anyway. It's a terrible hat. What's wrong with it? It's, a, it's no good. You don't want it. It's got too much money in it anyway. Oh, money is no object. Money is no object. <laughs> 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 lady, you don't need this hat. I'll tell you, look, there's a lot of nice hats around here. Wee, 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 wee. Funny, look, here. there's a nice hat right over here. You don't have to have that hat. Look, isn't that nice? How about that, huh? Look at that hat. Isn't that with the refrigerator on top keep you warm or cold? I don't like it. <laughs> you don't like <laughs> it. We, we, we don't like the hat. Got a good one. Here's a good hat. I like it. You like this hat, honey? Just goes with the refrigerators or anything like this. How about that? You like that? So everything with earphones and you don't... I don't like that one either. <laughs> don't like that hat. We, 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 we. That's, uh, how about this hat? This is a real nice one. You like this? It's a dream. This is what I call a real dream. Huh, lady? Hey there. I don't like any of them. You get a broken arm. You yeah, have a little trouble, pal. Oh, officer, I'm so glad you came in. I want to buy this red hat, and he won't sell it to me. Well, now, lady, you must be reasonable. If he says the hat's not right for you, I guess he knows. Tricks of the trade, lady. He knows the hat when he sees one, and I know a crook. Now, that's a real nice-looking bonnet. I think that might look real nice on you. You think so? Yes, indeed I do, ma'am. Well, you wear it. <laughs> now, ma'am, I don't think this is quite right for me, but uh, I do think it might look real nice on you. There. Now think it over. Good day. Wee oui, wee. Oui. What does he oui, know oui. about hats? I'm going to buy that red hat if it's the last thing I do. Why, well, right, I guess. Listen, you got the red hat. Did you hide it? The red hat with the no, money. You're not going to waste that on me because I'll find the red hat if it's the last thing that I do. When I make up my mind to do something, I do it. I'm not going to walk down Fifth Avenue looking like this. There must be a red hat around here. I know the red hat. I know the red hat around here. I know the red hat. Where's the red hat? I've got to find the red hat. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't look for the red hat. I found just what I want. There. Oh, it looks like a million bucks. Oh, I got to find the hat, the red hat with the money. I got to find the red hat with the money. The money, the money. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Mint, what are you doing? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. With the holiday season here upon us, everyone goes out to different places in search of amusement to forget about every day's care. So tonight, we'd like to take you to an imaginary nightclub and show you the different types of people that you might meet in a form of entertainer. First of all, in a nightclub, so many things go into it to make it a place of amusement. For instance, there's always a dramatic telephone that may be ringing or a door that swings open and lets in or lets out business. And most of all, and most important, of course, is the girl singer who's always featured. You've all seen her, and you all have your favorites, and now tonight, we'd like to show you the different types that we've seen that we think that you have met, too. Thank you very much, and Ole. The first one is, of course, the girl who has a smile in her voice. She's very happy, and she wants to make you happy, so she comes out all full of spirit, and she says, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to sing for you a little song, a song that's played a very important part in my life, a song that I love, that you love. It's a great whole American favorite. You know it, I know it, you love it, I love it, too. It's that wonderful old song. It's, um, uh, what's the name of that song? When you're smiling, when you're smiling, say the whole world smiles with you. And when you're laughing, aha, uh -huh, when you're laughing, you find all your dreams come true. 
At all. Oh, hello, Mervyn. How are you? Well, sure, I'm free after work tonight. Yeah. You're not. Gladys? You going out with her? Well, she's nice, but she's kind of old, isn't she? No, no, I'm not jealous. I'm not mad. No, nothing at all like that. I got a lot of live ones in the room tonight. Yeah. Everybody's laughing and scratching. We're having a wonderful time. Sure. Huh? No, I'm not mad, honey. I, I just thought you were going to take me out tonight after the show. I, I've been saving my money all week long, like you told me. Well, will you do me a favor? Will you call me when you get home? And, honey, I hope you like the bag of broken cookies I sent you. Yeah. All right, I, I'll talk to you, Mervyn. Oh, Mervyn! Mervyn! You want to take from the beginning? <laughs> when you smile. <laughs> Ooh, when you smile. <laughs> the whole world smiles. <laughs> player. No matter what happens, she knows she's right and he's wrong. You've all seen her. She works like this. You ready? Sure, I'm ready. What are you doing? Playing on your elbows back there? Right again. Somebody loves me. I want her home. Margaret Truman? Listen, I play on the white keys and I play on the black keys, but you're singing in the cracks. Thanks. <laughs> then, of course, there is the girl who's very chic and very elegant and all of a sudden terribly successful. She wants to sing while sitting on top of the piano. You all know her. for over 10 years. She doesn't worry about her job because she has a drink with everybody that comes into the room and just to keep on the safe side, she goes out with the boss on Saturday night. You all know her. Oh, hi, hi, hi. You like the dress? I made it myself. It ain't much, but it gets me on and off. It's all right. Oh, hi, bud. Are you okay? How are you? You okay? Rough. I got bagged last night. I got loaded. Fell on my head off the bar. It hurts like mad. I, I didn't feel like coming to work tonight, but I thought about the gang, and I didn't want to let anybody down. So here I am, just raring to go. I got rhythm. I got music. I got my man. Looks wonderful on you. You look wonderful. Looks like the top off of a Polish wedding cake. Yeah, <laughs> very good. Sam, when did you get out? <laughs> How long were you in? You know you look wonderful. The rest agreed with you. You look. Hello. Hello, Louie, the agent. Yeah. You what? You got me two weeks at the Waldorf. Cafeteria. <laughs> From there, I go into the Holland Tunnel. <laughs> the lights are good there, huh? Uh, what? How am I doing? How else? I'm doing wonderfully well, yes. One fella just got real hysterical down there. Uh-huh. He went like this. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you. I 
holiday season, most of the ballet companies throughout the country perform that wonderful classic ballet, Swan Lake. Well, tonight, the Admiral Broadway Review would like to present its own slightly uh, mutilated version of Swan Lake, featuring Emma Jean Coca and James Starbuck. <laughs>
I'm all excited inside because I've just seen my screen favorite, Mr. Gene Kelly. Oh, I know you might not agree with me, but I think he's the most attractive man in pictures. As a matter of fact, I think he's the greatest man in the world. But I guess you have your own movie favorites. Every time I come out of the movie house, well, I just stand outside and look at all his photographs. And then I go home and I write him a letter. I've done that ever since I've seen him. He never answers me, but I still keep writing to him. Kelly, I am writing this to you, and I hope that you will read it so you'll know. My heart beats like a hammer, and I stutter, and I stammer. <gasps> Every time I see you at the picture show, I guess I'm just another fan of yours. And I thought I'd write and tell you so. You always knew it. You made me happy sometimes. You made me glad. But there were times, sir, you made me feel so sad. Oh, gee, Mr. Kelly, I don't want to bother you. Guess, guess you've got a lot of girls that tell you the same thing. And if you don't want to read this letter, well, you don't have to. But I just had to tell you about the time I saw you at Anchors Away. That was the first time I ever saw you. And I knew right then and there you were the nicest fellow in the movie. I guess it was because you acted so... Oh, so natural-like. Not like a real actor at all, but just like any fellow you'd meet at college or at a party. And then one time, I saw you in a picture with Catherine Grayson. And I had to cry a little. Because you loved her so much and you couldn't have her. Well, not till the end of the picture anyway. And then one time I saw you in person. You were going to the store club one night and I was standing there. When you got out of your car and you almost knocked me down. Oh, but it wasn't your fault. I was in the way. But you looked at me and smiled. Yeah, you smiled right at me as if you meant it. And I cried all the way home. Just because you smiled at me for being in your way. Oh, I'll never forget it, Mr. Kelly. Honest, Injun, you're my favorite actor. I don't care what happens, let the whole world stop. As far as I'm concerned, you'll always be the top part. You
and gentlemen, we bring you non-entities in the news. First, a lady who had no time for the pleasures of promenading on Fifth Avenue. To our microphone comes lady cab driver, Miss Amelia Gearshift. <laughs> Hello, Miss Gearshift, and how did you find the parade? Oh, what a parade! Took me five and a half days to cross Fifth Avenue. Five and a half days? How could it possibly take that long? By way of Chicago. Oh, I see. Oh, but my fare enjoyed it very much. I have a lovely taxi, Brunhilde. That's my taxi. Brunhilde has painted a lovely shade of chartreuse. She has Venetian blinds on her windows, a bearskin rug on her floor, castles on her windshield wiper, and a drop of eau de cologne in her gasoline. If I say so myself, it's the best smelling taxi in New York. I'm sure the charged cab is very well equipped, and I suppose you have a radio. Oh, no, I sing for my customers. The Blue Danube Wall <laughs> is so Well, Miss Gearship, uh, I understand that cab customers are in the habit of leaving valuables behind them. Have you found many valuables in your cab? Oh, just the usual thing. Once I found a kangaroo. Kangaroo? How did that happen? Oh, I guess I picked him up on a slow road through, through Central Park. Well, uh, what did you do with this kangaroo? Well, what could I do? I charged him 20 cents for the first quarter of a mile and 5 cents for each additional. <laughs> By the way, he's still in my taxi. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Imogene Coker. And now with the arrival of spring, flowers have once again come into prominence. And over in Everbloom, Connecticut, a lady has developed what she calls the lightning Easter lily. And so from the gardens of Connecticut to our microphone comes Mrs. Hardy Perennial. Well, how do you do, Mrs. Perennial? And say, if I'm not being too inquisitive, is that some rare form of shrub you're carrying with you? Well, I'm not exactly carrying it with me. You see, I work in my garden a great deal of time. A lot of time I get some dirt in my pockets. And the other day I was just standing out there working in the garden and I accidentally dropped a couple of seeds in my pocket. While I was standing there, it started to rain. By the time I got into this house, why, this thing started growing. And, you know, it's what they call a clinging vine and I've grown to be attached to it. That's very interesting. Uh, Mrs. Brenner, would you tell us something about this lightning Easter lily that you've developed? The lightning Easter lily? Yes. Oh, my dear, it's terribly exciting. It's just the most exciting thing I've ever heard about for a long time. You want me to show you how it works? I'd be delighted. Well, of course, you know, it's a potted plant. You realize that, mm -hmm. don't you? Now, the first thing you do is to take a bulb and insert it in the earth. It's very important to have earth. Good, rich, black, brown earth. It's just wonderful, fragrant earth. I love it. Mm. Well, anyway, you see, you have your bulb in the earth, and you've got a place there, so the first thing you have to do is to nourish the bulb. This is what I often do. I take a little cod liver oil, put it in a spoon, put it around like that, it just, you know, and a couple of uh, vitamin pills. I, that, that always helps. I have to wash those down. <laughs> then after that, I have what I call an anti-weed needle, and it's just wonderful. I have to clear this up a little bit. <laughs> There, now, that didn't hurt at all, did it? Probably thought so. <laughs> ah, the pulse is normal. Now, of course, since this is Easter, the most important thing is to put in a couple of Easter eggs. Because, you know, you have to have the spirit of the season. I always oh, just wonderful. I find I help a great deal with uh, doing that. Now you mix that all in together, real good like, you know, yeah. so that you know the earth is around the bulb. And then you put in a little salt and pepper. And you keep stirring this all of the time. Put in a little pepper over here like that. Maybe a touch of paprika if you feel that way, you know. And then you just keep stirring and stirring and stirring until you have a very smooth batter. It's just one. But you can garnish it with a little parsley if you like. It's just wonderful. I Oh, it's just delicious. It's so wonderful. Now, the most important thing is next is to keep it warm, see? Oh, yeah. So you put on this, and you just sit there and stand there, and you wait. Is it true what they say about uh, Mrs. Frenniel, mm -hmm. do you mean to say that while we wait here, a flower is going to grow before our eyes? You don't doubt that, do you? Well, well it should be ready by now. Huh? Mm. <laughs> Can't understand it. Never happened before. I know I put the bulb in there. Well, no wonder, it's only 40 watts. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. This I'll have to put in my own garden. Lucky me. Thank you, Mary McCarthy. <laughs> and now, <laughs> the man, the man who had the most microscopic view of the Easter parade, the man who washes the windows of the 102nd floor of the tallest building in the world. From his perch high above the sidewalks of New York to our microphone comes window washer Pete Squeegee. Mrs. <laughs> Squeegee, uh, welcome to Non-Entities in the News, and tell us, how did you get your job? 
Oh, how lucky. Oh, yeah. Uh, they put an ad in, in a paper for a window washer, and a uh, thousand guys sh showed up. And then they told me how to wash the window on the uh, second floor. And 999 guys went away, and I was a lucky one who got the job. <laughs> but uh, tell us, don't you, uh, don't you realize that your job is very dangerous? Aren't you afraid of falling 102 stories? Well, I got workman's compensation. <laughs> well, um, what is the biggest worry on the job? Biggest worry? Yeah. Pigeons. <laughs> but, but, but why? Why? Well, I say, why? They're always trying to unhook my safety belt. Oh. Mr. Squeegee, how long does it take you to wash a window? Oh, about an hour. And uh, how many windows do you manage to wash in one day? About two, three hundred. <laughs> uh, Mr. Squeegee, working uh, thousands of feet above the earth like that, uh, what precautions do you take? Well, I've got a safety belt here, see? I'll put it on here, see, yeah. and I kind of attach it on there, and then I attach this one on here. Oh, yeah. Understand? Yeah. Then I've got the brush out here. Huh? And I do a little wash. <laughs> I squeegee it off. <laughs> squeegee it all off. That nice and clean. Go against the grain. Very okay. oh, nice. Yeah, look pretty good. Yeah, look it over. Yeah, look pretty good now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought my head was <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Sid Caesar. Tune in again next week for more non-entities in the news. And now, Marge and Gower Champion go on a picnic.
Ladies and gentlemen, there was a famous play that is usually revived around this time of year. It was called Cyrano de Bergerac. It was about a man who had an unusually large nose, but he had a very beautiful voice and a romantic spirit. His handsome friend Christian asks Cyrano to go into the shadows and plead for him with Roxanne. The part of Cyrano was played by the very famous American actor, Jose Ferrer, but I should like to tell you the story in my own way. Cyrano de Bergerac was a cat who lived way back in the days when Paris was jumping. There lived a cat who really was some philosopher's swordsman, a poet, a whack. His name was Cyrano de Bergerac. He cut quite a figure with feminine creatures. But there was one thing that loused up his features. Yes, just one thing, and guess what it was? A most monumental extravagant schnoz. One morning, he saw a fair lady molested, gallant and fearless. He bravely protested. The villain drew out his sword from his scabbard. And Cyrano drew his from force of habit. <laughs> Sword, baron, I fire upon it as I cut you to ribbons. I'll compose a sonnet. Roses are red and violets are blue. They'll soon be dead, and so will you. In spite of the nose upon Cyrano's pan, he fell for this dame by the name of Roxanne. But she preferred Christian as those things occur. Christian was out of his head about her. Now Chris tried to keep his love flame alive, but he was a square of help to the jive. So Cyrano goes under her window, and Christian, he stands there just like a schmo. Now Chris, no dick, cut alive that loot. Let us dig some jive with a solid boot. If thou hast a day, tell thou the love that we steppeth out to cut it around. On account of the boot that Cyrano pitched, Roxanne and Christian go out and get hitched. Christian, he goes to battle, and there he gets bumped off. Sell la guerre, sell la guerre. Get away from it all, Roxanne. She goes to a fancy dress ball, and there, dressed up like a Russian Cossack, she meets Cyrano de Bergerac. As soon as she hears his baritone voice, she knows right away he's the man of her choice. As Shakespeare said, and I repeat, a nose by any name smells just as sweet. tribute to the Easter holidays and presents the Admiral Choral Group featuring Beverly Janis and the Admiral Ballet Company in processional, recalling the pioneer spirit of America as on the dawn of Easter morning, the men and women who tilled the soil and made their homes slowly climbed the hill to greet the sunrise.
into your room. Your admiral dealer extends a fond invitation to his friends. Be back again next Friday when it's admiral show time. We'll whip up in no time a brand new review. Till then, goodbye and your goodbye is admiral. All the top of the evening to you. again, same time, same channel next Friday night, when your Admiral Dealer, the man to see for dual temp refrigerators, electric ranges, radios, record players, and magic mirror television, brings you another star-studded Admiral Broadway review.